Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bell Ringers podcast. Colin Daly and Ben Goldstein on here. We are actually pre-recording this segment today because we have in our time about five minutes and your time about 45 seconds coming up is a very special interview. We can take a look at Ben's shirt, um, the Pandemic Crew. You might not have heard that name from, for a while, um, but you definitely heard their name in 2020, the year of the COVID-19 pandemic. They um, camped outside of the stadium during the home games. And they really made a name for themselves. And we're going to talk to them, talk a little bit about their experience on the pod tonight. So uh, without further ado, should we invite them in, Ben? Let's go. All right. Well, everyone, I'd like to give a very warm welcome to Brett and Oscar from the Pandemic Crew. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Great. Doing good. Doing? Thanks for having us out here. Oh, thank you for Tom, coming. This is, a pleasure. this is exciting. So actually, something that I really wanted to bring up first is I think that we have something newly in common is that we both met Zach Hample. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yes. Zach's great. Yeah, Zach, yeah, so... uh, Zach came ahead. out during the pandemic and actually watched the game with us. And he, um, you know, he, he did one of his uh, YouTube videos. There. It's up on YouTube. Great guy, man. He was really cool, man. He's a lot different than I thought he was going to be, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I know a lot could, of people like to give him a hard time, but he's, he was pretty solid. Yeah, we get a lot. Yeah. I still get a lot of response uh, and and DMs about that game with the Zach Hample, um, him coming out and watching the game with us. We still get response about it. I have a funny story about that night. So I was actually supposed to go because I've been watching Zach Hample for six or seven years now, and I love him. So I was supposed to go down that night. And my dad didn't get home from work. My dad works in the city. He didn't get home from work until about 8 o'clock that night because the president was in town. Uh, uh, so obviously we didn't go. My dad was more upset than I was because I think he wanted to meet Zach too. So hopefully I'm going to try and track him down sometime this year. I've been. Well, you got I, a chance to see him uh, Sunday in Redding. The April 10th, he's going to be up there. Yeah, I, I tried to persuade uh, the father to do that, but he doesn't want to go down to Reading, so. Take an Uber. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Hundred so Kyle, what's your story about Zach? Mm-hmm. Kyle, what's your, what's your story, story about Zach? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you there. Um, so I was down in Clearwater, Florida for spring training uh, about three weeks ago, and I was out on the berm watching uh, the relievers for the Phillies warm up in the bullpen. And randomly, I was with my friend, and I just saw him come around the corner. It's like, that's Zach Hample. I'm looking over. I'm like, that's Zach Hample. So um, I talked to him. He gave us a, um, a card for his, um, his documentary that's coming out. And I was able to get a picture with him, which I think in our last podcast that we recorded, which is uploaded today, that is actually, there's a picture of that, and we'll put it in this podcast too. Um, So that was actually really cool to meet him. Uh, And it was actually interesting that he was leaving to get onto a flight right as I met him. So he actually ran, as soon as I finished my conversation with him, he ran off out of the ballpark to catch the plane in Tampa, which is really cool. He uploaded that video uh, today, I think. He did, yeah. I was um, was just watching that too. Yeah, Zach's I think I a made good dude, man. He's, he's, he's pretty laid back. He's got a funny picture of himself at the vet in like 1996. So he's like your guy's age. He's got like yeah. a starter jacket on, like holding up the ball. I think it was the All Star game, wasn't it? Or was it the World Series? I think, yeah, I think it was the All Star game. So he's been at it a long time, man. People give him shit, man. He's been at it for 30 years, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's dedication, really. It's impressive. Not a lot of people catch 12,000 baseballs at no. baseball games. I should have to catch one. Yeah. Uh, so, so Zach is a guy that uh, travels everywhere. Um, but I, I had the chance to go to Chicago and hang out with the ball hawks out there. And this is in 2016, the last time I went out to Chicago. And I made sure that one of the days on that weekend, first of all, the Phillies got swept. Uh, they weren't that good. Of course they did. Um, their, 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 their star player at the time was uh, Franco. So even though I, I did like Franco, but um, love Franco, they, yeah, the Phillies, the Phillies weren't uh, weren't too good. So I made sure that I spent the day out there with the Ballhawks, and they were very welcoming. 
Um, but to talk to those guys, those guys were in the ages of 60, but they've been doing this since teenagers. So you could just ima- imagine the amount of baseballs they have, you know, so it, it's sort of like a, a Zach Hample story, but they, they stay in Chicago. And I recommend if anybody goes to Chicago to spend some time with them, because they're real chill guys. But the one thing I do tell you is that they all have their spots. It doesn't matter if they were 18 or 60. Um, you're not going to stand in their spots. They know the sweet spots. They know to put the back on the wall. They know when it's going to go down, you know, Waveland Avenue. So you just got to kind of find a spot and get in where you fit in. You know, Oscar, I was talking to Vince the other day. They're doing a trip to Chicago in uh, September. Let's do it, man. Yeah, no, it's like, oh, Oscar probably want to go back there. Oh, yeah. Good time over there, man. Very old school. Like it. It's it's if you're a baseball fan, those are the those are the type of uh, ballparks you want to go to. Fenway, Chicago. I haven't been to the West Coast. Brett Brett's been to the West Coast. I actually want to go to uh, Nantucket to go watch some some baseball over there. Yeah, um, yeah, and just keep on traveling. Yep. All right, Kyle. You know, let's when get we to got, the... when we got a when we got a red. And that's always a special spot for me because when I was about. Out, 11 or 12 years old, that's where I caught my first foul ball ever. I didn't actually catch it. I was the one that ran and got it first, but it still counts. And um, uh, I met Jamie Moyer, and I didn't even know who he was. He was in the minor league of the Cubs. So I met him a little bit younger, and he was cool as that. He, he, like, signed our ball and was talking to us about, you know, hey, you guys play Little League. So, like, you know, like, you remember those kind of things. And these kids are like Zach Campbell. Same thing. You know, Oscar's friend brought out his kids just to see him. But everybody, um, you know. But anyway, yeah, so I guess for those of you guys who didn't watch our um, podcast last year, we interviewed the Fandemic crew. How did you guys start? Like, when was the first time this even, like, came up in conversation, like, the idea? You want to break it down real quick, Brett? Yeah, so uh, I've known Oscar for a few years to the Phillies uh, collectible community. You know, we see each other around at events at games and stuff, and – um when they did that second spring training in uh, Philly, we uh, – what's that? What's that oh. one? Oh, uh, Howard. That's a good one. Blue so, calls anyway, Howard. <laughs> so, we uh, – let's say, so, I went over to the spring training in Philly right, right before the season started in 2020, and I knew they were having it at FDR Park also, so I went over there. And uh, when I came back to Sinsbag Park, Oscar was there. I was like, yo, make sure you hit up FDR Park because, you know, you could have been Zach Campbell that day. Like, it was like playing a little league or a high school field, and the balls were just flying out. There was nobody there. There was, yeah, like, was a so kid that was running around, and then me. So I grabbed – I think I took, like, two or three balls, and then I left, and I saw Oscar over there. And um, we could see the um, bad practice. We couldn't see anything, but we could see the balls coming up in the air. So we were like, you know, we should come back and watch games here, you know, just to sit out here with the radio, you know, be kind of cool. And that's how it got birthed. That's how it all started. Conversation at the gate. That's awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, on my side, it was kind of, um, you know, I, I had that split decision to make. It was uh, actually the Orioles game, uh, which started, you know, uh, the season in Citizen Bank Park. And in South Jersey, Every, everyone knows if you're going from Audubon into Philadelphia, there's a split where it's like Walt Women Bridge or you can head to Camden or Gloucester City. And I'm telling you, I made my decision like as soon as I got to that fork, it was like, are you going to the ballpark and just being out there and being part of history? Or are you going to a, a local pub to just, you know, grab a beer and watch the game? And that split second, I said, "No, nah, I'm going. I'm going to uh, Citizen Bank Park. Um, see what I can do over there." Well, we never imagined um, that the pandemic crew was going to be birthed off of that. But again, just to touch on it, man, me and Brett, we've been fans of the Phillies since younger kids, and you guys know, you know, all the great fan groups that came out of Veterans Stadium, Connie Mack Stadium, and, and Citizen Bank Park, and you know. I was always a fan of that, and I'm just we, we I'm just glad we had a chance to do it. And 
you know, and, and we did it in a positive way. We raised money for Ch- Philly's charity. Uh, me and Brett, man, this is like a fan's dream. The Phillies created two bobbleheads of us. I don't know if you can see it, but it's probably like right around there. I got the box still, over there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's I a wait. single person screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I I still wake up every every uh, every day proud of what me and Brett created, and um, me and Brett was just talking about it the other day. Like you know, there's there's small things that happen. Like the Phillies would mention us, and or this and that would happen. We call each other like, man, I, I can't believe this is happening. So again, we're me and Brett are living a fan's dream. Uh, we're going to continue pushing it, and doing you know. Our, our good work in the community, loving baseball, and, and planting the seeds to like young young fans like you, so the game can grow. Awesome. Yeah, you know the best the best thing about the way the crew came about was it was organically. Like we didn't like set out to make a fan group. You know, we were just going to sit out there and you know listen to the game on the radio, have a beer, because it was a pandemic and there was a lot else to do. You know, and it just grew so organically. So yeah, that was always cool too. That's awesome. During that season, <clears throat> what did your night look like on Philly's game day? Like, can you break down like <clears throat> the ritual of like in the what you went? Yeah, through that so night? I, I, I I'll, I'll touch on that, Brett. So again, uh, me me and me and Brett didn't take vacations from our jobs, or you know, we didn't call out or just stop working and just focus on the pandemic crew. We, we, you know, and there's other things that, you know, that we have to deal with in our lives because everybody has things to deal with. Um, that never changed. It was, you know, it was work for me. I'm speaking for myself now. Work from, you know, it was like six to three or six to four. And then hurrying up, showering, getting dressed and hustling the Citizen Bank Park uh, to make sure that we're setting up. We're like, we're putting our our flags up. You've been out there, Ben, so you know how we decorated and stuff and uh, making sure that we had hand sanitizers on the gates. But again, we were dealing with a pandemic, making sure that we had masks, making sure that our batteries for our radios are all charged. There, there was a, a preparation, but it, it it's our passion, so it, it doesn't bother me, you understand? So, you know, after a game, you know, we, we will make sure that we clean up and then we'll, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Hey, we'll do it again the next day, man. It's, it's one of those moments, uh, well, a season that I will never forget. It, even after the, the end of that uh, 2020 season, you know, I was pretty choked up. I mean, Brett was next to me, man. It was, it was sad to, you know, to end the season and all the people that we met. Um, it, it was just a good feeling. Yeah, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, some of the other things, like we were – kind of like put in charge of the area out there you know oscar would be out there at the end of the night with the uh with the leaf blower you know make sure there's yeah. cigarette spots and you know we leave it better than the way you came there you know we who's got trash lights your trash light tonight you know whoever's trash light was closed would take yeah. the trash from with them and uh, i got trash lights today. i remember the one time there was the raccoons got into it and there was patched cheesesteak wrappers all over my lawn and i was like <laughs> i didn't get one of those cheesesteaks i gotta pick up yeah. everybody's trash but you know it was uh you know we'd get there and Sometimes we wait for the broadcasters. Um, sometimes we'd even be there on the away games with the radio. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I can they- actually, I can actually say that, you know, when you call uh, Citizen Bank Park uh, your second home, uh, last season being inside the ballpark, and the amount of games that me and Brett been to, I can actually say that was my first home. Like I spent more time in Citizen Bank Park, inside and outside, than actual home. Yeah, by like September, it started to become a little bit of a grind. And, you know, we yeah. were only doing the home games. I couldn't imagine what those guys were going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's their job, I guess. Um, did the Phillies ever take down your 15 at the at the gate? Oh, they actually oh, – right, you want to talk about – they actually took it down doing – Are you the, serious? Uh, no, no, no. You talking about listen. Listen. They took – like the when they retired um, uh, Allen's number, you put up the fifteen, and then you like yeah. when he passed away, you put like candles around and stuff. Did they take? Yeah, that you out? should have seen that night. It was me, Oscar, my dad. It was about five degrees, and like Oscar's masterfully wrapping the bow. My dad and I were, like pulling taut, like giving directions, and we couldn't feel our fingers, and it was terrible. 
the... but we also had a um, pediatric uh, cancer ribbon up there for a while. Yeah, they had to come down. The, the pediatric cancer ribbon was like turning white instead of yellow, getting all free. Yeah. And the dick out was getting, you know, it was just, it was out there in the elements in the winter and the sun. Yeah, they kept, I was surprised how long they made it there. So One Brett, of our signs is still up there. We saw it the other day. <laughs> yeah, we saw it the other day. Uh, keep that a secret. Hopefully, you know. But anyway, real quick, Brett, you know, it was funny um, how cold it was that night and us wrapping that thing. So if anybody got to see us put that thing together you would appreciate it more because it's just actual ribbon and it's wrapped around like these metal bars and it, it looked real good so thank god it was and, the holidays and they have red, uh, red ribbon yeah, and candy and, like that <laughs> and brett and, and brett's father you know got to see dick allen uh play and you know me and brett didn't get to watch him play but we always hear these you know you hear the good the bad um but we always respect dick allen and it, it, it was an honor to do that. Uh, but they did take it down, Brett. Um, I believe it was that Yankee series because the Phillies knew the crowd that was coming in the Philadelphia that week. So I think they got everybody like, hey, let's make sure our park looks real good. Oh, that's right, yeah. And it, it was that series when it went down. What yeah, they should have done is they, is they should have taken it down, spray painted it red so it would look clean, then put it back up. Or just spray no, painted no. the bars red outside. The yeah, stadium. you could have done that too. I mean. You know, it it, nah, they, it, it it had its time. It served its role. It's, you know what? Man. I was looking for something the other day, Oscar, and I found, I saw that Dick Allen sign. Remember that guy made for the ceremony and left it with us? I still have yeah. it. I think I have one here that we made. It's right, somewhere Colin, around here. Colin, you got the next question? Yeah, so now that we're in 2022 with some of the, the mandates being lifted and you're being able to go back in the stadium, how's all this changed? Like, you know, the dynamic of a home game in Citizens Bank Park. It kind of changed last year. I mean, mm -hmm. last season, uh, you know, we came into the ballpark, being the first 10 fans to come into the ballpark, um, which was an honor. You know, we, we, thanks, we thank the Phillies for doing that. I mean, we thank the Phillies for so much they did for us. But um, we, we, we started the season with restrictions. So our temporary home of 245, was broken up in pods. And it was, you know, it's pretty difficult to sell tickets in pods because if you had one or two people that wanted to buy, it was, you know, you had to buy the four pods. Um, we kind of got around that. But yeah, it'd be like, yeah, you want to dress with a random person. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, we were just happy to have baseball. So we, you know, we stood outside a whole season outside the gate. So this wasn't going to bother us. We were just happy to be inside. And then little by little, you know, things, the restrictions started to lift. Uh, and, and we got a, a sense of normalcy uh, towards the end of the season. Um, and then this, this year, I mean, I know we had the lockout and everything, but uh, this is probably going to be the closest to a normal season we had since, what, 2019, Brett? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think I saw in the, uh, the notes that we're talking about this later, but yeah, we have like four series after our last home game because of the um, lockout. So Houston and Washington, they tacked it on to the end I saw the other day. But so for now, it's going to feel totally normal like last year, you know, having full crowds. You know, events are back. I noticed that some of the events are back on the calendar. Um, I think it really helps too that the team's going to be super competitive, that there's big names. You know, it's bringing draw, – draw a lot of attention, a lot of interest. You know, as far as the crew goes, look, I would say it was about six years ago. My kids are getting older, and all my friends, their kids are, like, young, so I didn't really have people to go to the game with. So I just started going by myself. I was like, you know what? I'll meet people there. And I did. And, you know, like, now that the team's getting good again, interest is picking up, and we're going to be there no matter what. Yeah. Um, how – did you react to the attention you received from the organization and the fan base? Like, how did that, like, happen to you? <laughs> so, so you know, um, when, when we were out there, I, I think the the first mention was either uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brett. Uh, it was it Kevin Franson that sp spoke about us first or T Mac? I think it was T Mac. 
Yeah, I remember Tom McCarthy was the first one to shout you out. Yo, yeah, yeah. Oscar can hear it, and you can, if you watch the video of Fan Never Cruise Up, you can see Oscar jumping and waving. You can, yeah. His joy of that moment was captured forever. They, and it's kind of like they show, like when they show Fan Never Cruise Up, that, that video is one of the ones. Yeah, that, that video is show up and, and that and, and that right there was the highlight of my of my life, man. I was so happy, like. T Max said our name. We're, we're jumping around. We're Philly fans. We're supporting our team. And I just thought that was the height. Um, <laughs> but once, um, once the, uh, I think you can see the poster back there, the Aaron Boone thing happened, that's when it really, really kicked off. Like locally, like the radio was bringing us up, like, yeah, we got some fans out there. But once that Aaron Boone thing happened, him complaining about us. It took off because it went, it actually went international, you know, for, for a couple hours for the day. So it, it was, it, it, I'm still surprised that, you know, that me and Brett, uh, we, we have a fan group. I remember yeah, I mean, that. I remember that Aaron Boone moment. Like it was yesterday. I remember, I remember, well, I remember saying to my dad, why is Aaron Boone going out? And then I see him point. I'm like, no way. He's a parent, parent he's a, He's complaining about the air horns out there. It was hilarious. And then the that, Karen that Boone and that all stuff. That was, that that was hilarious. That I remember that. probably that. be in my uh, obituary someday. <laughs> yeah. Right back then, that jerk I made Aaron Boone, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> you know, listen, you know I, I, I... You know what, though? Like, for me, like, like, I remember the first time the Fanatic came by, I was like, whoa, the Fanatic, man. Look at this. You know, was, that's pretty I awesome. remember that. Yeah, that was awesome. And then... Yeah. Was it Bob Brooker, the reporter from the Enquirer? Mm-hmm. I think it was, he was the, I Brooker, think he was the first one, right? Yeah, if I'm wrong, I apologize to Bob Brooker, but a reporter for the Enquirer, he just kind of came out. Like, I remember he took attendance. He took our names. And, remember Pod? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what's your last name? He goes, just Pod. <laughs> so, like, so, yeah, like, it, so, yeah, it, like, oh, I'm going to be in the paper. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, and it was, it, you know, it was hard to ignore us because – you know, we've been out there for quite a, a while before we actually had like our pandemic crew debut. Um, I remember getting the signs done. You know, we 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 hired a drum line to come out, and that day was just magical. And it wasn't a Brett. How, how many people? Maybe tops fifteen people out there at that time. Yeah, and, like fifteen twenty people. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you go back to that post that post interview with Aaron Boone and they asked him that question about, Hey, did the, you know, that the, the fans out there distract you as he's speaking, you can still hear us hitting our horns in the background. That's how funny this thing was. And then we got under the skin of Jordan Montgomery. Uh, yeah. you know, I t- I'll tell you a cool story real quick, man, Brett. And, and this is how good a, a, of a guy Brett is, uh, on doing, I think it was the Christmas holidays. He bought me a gift, man. And there was, the Jordan Montgomery ball and that ending, uh, where all the uh, all the things got all, you know, wh- where we pissed off the Yankees. And I still, I you know, it's cool. I was just looking at the ball the other day. I'm like, man, you know, Brett really uh, he did his he did his homework on this gift right here. Yeah, I'd have John Hollinger help me out, and then we kind of narrowed it down to, you know, like we think this is the one. Like, but yeah, that John was very helpful. That too. Awesome gift, man. Thank you. Hey, no problem, man. All right, so Colin, you got this one. Yeah, so I think that you guys mentioned this earlier. Um, looking at the twenty twenty two schedule, what do you guys think? Like, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a good schedule. I think starting off the season with the A's could not be more ideal. The right? most relevant better team in baseball. In in Houston, better start in the road in Houston, and in Houston, Houston might have shit wrapped up out there and be resting people. Hopefully, we'll have stuff wrapped up also, but. That's what checks on the schedule real quick. So, so I can tell you what what benefits us early early in the uh, season is, you know, you, you never want to wish a player to be hurt, but with the Mets having both of their star pitchers down, yep, um, and having an early series with those guys, um, you know, if, if the, you know the Phillies can take care of business, we can we can we can get up there. Uh, second is, you know, you got the Washington Nationals, and you know, it's. You know, they, they might not be that good. They might be the bottom team in the division because you can never count out the Marlins. But I think it comes down to teams like Washington. So people in the division, whoever gets the best out of Washington, say if you go like um, 
thirteen and six, that that can uh, that could be the difference of you making the postseason. So yeah, um, let's just that extra wild card. It may be more like you know exactly yeah. Yeah, the yeah, Phillies. I mean, the Phillies. They have. They Phillies play on the twenty fifth, and then their last game's on October fifth. Three against Chicago, three against the Nats, and then three or just two or three against Houston. So you know, so it's, our end of the season's pretty. Well, yeah, I but if Houston's are, but if Houston's already decided what it's doing, it might. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we might get lucky and get some restful things, and you know the Nationals might be trapped. Although those are the games you'll lose when they try like a new rookie pitcher. All of a sudden, it's like yeah, the, two nothing. The one lose. thing, yeah, the one thing that's going to be real fun this season is, um, it's going to be Philly fans traveling. I, I believe uh, we're going to go back to how it was between 2007 and 2011, how the mm-hmm. fans traveled. So I, we're we're definitely taking over Washington again. Um, it's not Nationals Park. We all know this Citizen Bank Park South, and even you know, City Field. That right? last season, we should do that last series, like. This, the weekend of September 30th through October 2nd. You yeah. got to make a sign. I, 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 I'd be down for that. I might, I might join you guys. Yeah, I mean, and then even uh, uh, City Field. We, we know how annoying it is. Mets fans, they travel well too, man. They come down to Philadelphia, and it, it does piss me off, man. You get the cowbell. I haven't seen them in a couple of years, but you get the, the Mets cowbell guy that walks around the concourse and hitting the bell. Um, and then even having like their fan groups come down and take over a whole section in uh, left field. Oh, I um, remember that. They took over the whole yeah. second deck. You guys are yeah, lucky. And, and, you guys, you guys are lucky. You moved from two forty five for that game. Uh, no, and, that, and you know what? We I, found I, out we were moving. <laughs> yeah, but listen, I, I I embrace that type of stuff, man. I, I, I'm I'm cool with that because uh, you know uh, that it, it makes the rivalry better. We want both. You want all teams to be good, man, so you can have a good rivalry. It's never fun beating up on a team for so many years. But it, it, baseball and the NL East baseball is always good when the Mets are real good and the Phillies are real good. And, and there's proof from, you know, in 2007 and 2008. Oscar, man, these guys probably don't remember that because that's probably how – what year were you guys? Oh, born? yeah. Oh, I, I was born in 2007, so wipe that out of me. Yeah, but how old I, were you? Like, I, 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 know like I, I study all that stuff, so I know what happened, man. I know because yeah, Colton doesn't know. remember that. Colton, like Colton's, a, he's eighteen. He doesn't remember the World Series or nothing. And he watched that with me. Yeah, you know, you, you, hey Brett, maybe you can agree with me t- here too. Like, you know, e- even though these guys didn't win a championship with us, um, like players like Aaron Rowan and Jim Tomey play a big part. Yeah. Uh, of of that championship, man, because they like Aaron Rowan was that guy that he didn't take. Nothing, man. He was just hard nosed player. You think Ch- Chase Shutley's a tough guy, man? Aaron Rowan is, man. He really brought that attitude. Um, not not saying anything against Chase Shutley and Jimmy Rollins and all those guys, but you needed someone like that. And and even Jim Tomey when he came to Philadelphia, like it made players want to come to Philadelphia. Yeah, it's some slowly building. Like remember speaking of fan groups, remember uh, Tom Flash Gordon had that fan group. Oh, uh, Flash! Uh, yeah, remember they all dressed like superhero outfits and hung yeah, out on yeah, the yeah. bridge by hung out on the bridge exactly. and hung over the bullpen. Yep. Flash. Oh. I found I found the video of uh, when you guys were first on TV. Wow! There I go. Yeah, see that look at Oscar jumping there. Was Dude, that Birdman? Uh, that yeah, that Birdman next to you. <laughs> hey, hey, Brett, I have a listen, even, yo, so I don't even drink beer. Brett knows I, I rarely drink. I have a beer in my hand there. Oscar, you give Oscar a beer, and he's like, he'll drink like eight sips over like 14 hours. <laughs> I'm not a beer guy, man. Yeah, man, look what happened the one time we did have a drunk guy. He was falling off, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, what do right, you think so about that I'm... new uh, 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 Philly's uh, Budweiser can? It looks pretty cool, right? It does. It's retro, yeah. So yeah. I took a picture when I was sitting with you guys one time, and – the chicken man photobombed my picture. I zoomed in on it. It's hilarious. So I took uh, the picture. Chicken man's iconic. And he was in the back, and I was like, hold up. <laughs> oh, that's the best picture, man. Yeah, it's yeah, a great picture. Chicken man. Yeah, Shout out to Frank, man. Yeah, is he, yeah, is he coming out? I think I haven't heard from him in a couple. I got to give oh. him. I called him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I got to call him, though. Yeah, I'll text you later.
Hello everyone, and a quick interruption from me, Colin Daly of Philly Sports Sports. I'm just reminding you that we are partnered with SeatGeek, and because of this, if you use code Philly Sports Sport on your first order, you will get 10% off. So keep that in mind when you're buying tickets to your next sporting event. So, Oscar, Brett, what are you guys thinking? 2022 overall prediction, just like sum it up. Like what, how would you describe the season? How you think it's going to go? I, I got you. Uh, um, it's going to be a uh, world series. Um, <laughs> me, hey Ben, you're laughing. I, we're, we're serious here, man. I, I'm thinking world series. Are you series. doing the same thing as about. last year? I said you're going 162 and 0 with the world series. No, nah, no. Nah. So I said 90 is 72. That gets us into the postseason. We uh and we play the and I kind of pick it back off of Brett right now because it, it was a very good choice and I like I like the, the the matchup. The Phillies and Blue Jays in the World Series and the Phillies come up on top in game six in Philadelphia. Okay. I like that. I'm fan of that. Yeah. So Ben and uh Kyle, when you guys have off uh a random Wednesday in uh, November. You'll be glad the Phillies won the World Series. I might, I'm probably not even go to school that day if the Phillies are in the World Series. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, you have to not go, man. You definitely got enough fandom. That's like, yeah, that's like a guarantee. I don't care about school. All the Phillies are in the World Series. First time my life. I'll, call, I'll scare it out, call you out. It'll be like Ferris Bueller's day off. Yeah, mm-hmm. can, you, uh, can you give me like a permission slip? I mean, yeah. Ben I'll Goldman. Get- and Ben Goldstein, please. Yes. Yeah. I'm, gonna need, a, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a discount on those World Series tickets though from because I'm gonna sit up with you guys. I'm gonna need a discount. Those yes, yeah, so just to touch up on that real quick, like yeah, there you go. <laughs> Brett's a little uh, just uh, just a little bit older than me. And so I grew up as a championship baby. I was born in 1981. And, um, you know, as a fan, like around, how old are you, Ben? Uh, 14. I, I don't know why I was blanking on that. 14. Yeah, yeah. So 14. You know, we, during that age, uh, 14, actually my, my whole my whole life, um, we didn't know what it was to, to win the championship. The city was in a major drought. And we always felt like, you know, Philly, Philly was cursed and, you know, it will never happen. So when it did happen, no, in no way, it was very, very special, man. And I cherish that moment uh, for the rest of my life, man. And I hope you guys get to, you know, we all get to celebrate a, another championship, mo- multiple championships with yeah, this multiple. core, core guy. But yeah. I mean, Especially this core. It, yeah, it can happen. It can happen. So you just always, you know, like Harry Callis always says, the uh, high hopes, keep the faith. Uh, I, believe. I think we'll be getting a Sixers championship in a couple of years. Uh, you can quote me on that, too. Yeah, we are, uh, we've we heard that before. Remember the Eagles? That's true. Yeah. Oh, the it's, the new, now. it's the new norm. We're going to make the playoffs so. next year. That would be great. 1980, all four made it to the uh, – to, the Phillies made the World Series. The Eagles made the Super Bowl. Sixers NBA Finals. The Flyers made Stanley Cup. That'd be nice. We only won Union, one of them. Uh, NLS Cup in there. We only won one of them. Uh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, my <laughs> prediction. Um, I think we're gonna be better than a lot of people think. I don't think our defense. I think our defense is good. Um, especially with how we've been in spring training. Didi Gregorius is back at shortstop. Back with his normal Yankees. Um deal where he was where he could field every ball over there um left field is left field uh Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos are going to do their thing over there and I mean Bryson Stott who I'll, we'll probably get to a little bit later is a has been cool as a cucumber over there at third base so I think we're fine Alec Bohm had a nice play the other day actually too so if he needs to go there I think we might be we'll be all right but um I think I, I think the, the point Oh, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, you, you, you can go. No, so I, I think what everybody misses is that we can't forget that the Phillies in the last two seasons um, were historically bad in, in the bullpen. Those those guys aren't here anymore, and, and they changed it. And they got guys in here that all have closer stuff. We got a healthy uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez back, you know. That's big. Um, 
it's very big. So you know, it's it's a new it's a new uh, bullpen there. If we can just imagine if we were to slash half of those those losses because of the bullpen last year, we we'll be in the postseason. Twenty twenty two, we were. And twenty twenty, yeah, we missed it by a game. Twenty twenty, yeah, so, we just missed out. They've done Browski and the Phillies. They 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 filled in those holes, and I think they got good good arms in there that you know that that's going to change this year. And the defense thing, th- those are people just in outside of Philadelphia chattering um, because they, they don't like the big bats that we have right now. That's my big thing with the people is the defense. But going off what you said with the bullpen, um, I think we're I think our bullpen's going to be. I mean, we're not going to be I'm not going to be a great bullpen, but we'll be a. We'll be all right. I mean, the offense is so good that the bullpen won't have to rely off them so much like they have the past few years where our offense can't get anything going. And I think you know what, though? If if Brad Hand, Familia, and Knable, if they all get it like they couldn't get it right, that could be our um, Herrera, Coach Shaver, and Wade, uh, Wade Davis. Remember, like the Royals had? And it was just mm-hmm. like, dude, we just get our stars in the six and it's done. Mm-hmm. Those guys fired mm-hmm. all cylinders, man. We're good. Yeah, I don't I'm not I'm not so hot on a Brad hand, but uh Familia's yeah, all right. And I love be. I've loved I've loved Kenebel since the uh, end of the end of the season last year. Free agency started. I love that signing. Yeah. But yeah, so did I my and, focus- and listen, the, 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 I'm I'm sorry to cut you off again. You're good. It, they, Dave Dombrowski is here to win. Listen. This organization is all in. And if you don't know that by now, man, you, you, we went over the luxury tax. We got some big bats. Dombrowski is a proven winner. Um, the, yeah. These guys are just not going to stop and be like, all right, this is it. You know, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to make more moves before the deadline to add more power to this, uh, this lineup oh, yeah. and more arms. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they're nowhere out. near done. Yeah, watch out they're for the series, man. Done. And like, yeah, in I think my the prediction, Browns is just waiting. Like, let's see how this starts playing out. And when we need to, we'll make a move. You know, let's let's see what we got. Because you you have those teams, man. Like San Diego, all these these teams are supposed to be doing real well, and and and, and it doesn't turn out right. And now they're sellers. You understand what I'm saying? So that's where you get the bargain, that man. So you get rental pieces just to come in here, just to win a championship, man. I see you have. Oh yeah, I mean. Look at the Mets right now. I mean, they're they're the definition of what you just said, Oscar. The season hasn't even started yet, and they're trending down, right? I'm just shocked by that. It's the Mets. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. We haven't played a game yet. They haven't even stepped foot on the city field, and they're already going way down. Yeah. That has to tell you something right there. Anything can happen at any time. But well, we got we got to play our part. We got to play our part too. So right. My um my overall predictions is I was on a podcast a couple of weeks ago. And you know what? I'm changing it. I had I was so happy with my prediction a few weeks ago, but now that we've gotten further into the training and I we look better. Let, let me guess. You you, you were 86, 87, 86, 87? I said 88 wins. I don't know how many losses that would be. And I said no playoffs. I'm sticking to 88. I'm upping it to no, I think I said 85 wins. I'm upping it to 88. And I'm I'm having the Phillies at the final uh playoff spot. I think we sneak in finally. Do I think we make it past the first round? That's to be adjourned. But I I think we sneak in. I think this might be the year where we finally have some red October. Yeah, and Ben, I think I'm in the same boat as you because I'm just a naturally pessimistic person. And coming from me, I would say that my confidence level, especially after the Castiano signing, the Castiano signing really put me on the playoff board there. You got the I hit baseballs. You got the I hit baseballs. Yeah, I you laughed see it? so hard oh, that's at that awesome. Instagram post. I was like, that is perfect. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, we have, we, we, get we, a lot of good yeah, we'll get a lot of good quotes from Castellanos. Do, do you still have the um, – How are me and you more optimistic, optimistic than these young guys? You ran out and got that jersey and stuff. You're like, we're all in. They're like, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, ever since the Sixers blew it in that game seven against the Hawks, I've been so unoptimistic about sports. It's ridiculous. I don't know what they did. But I'm just – my whole thinking of sports just went completely backwards. I'm telling you, man, and, and you guys are young fans, man, and, and me and Brett, like, it, it was to, – to, to root for your team and stick with them. 
through the good times and the bad times, it is so rewarding. It's, it feels so good when you win a championship, like like an old weight, man. It just like took a weight off of our shoulders. Like, hey, man, we we did it. Like, all these good teams, and we we powered through the Dodgers. We went through all these teams, man, and we, and we did it, man. Um, the so, Dodgers like, they used to own us in the playoffs. Yeah, and they used to own us, man. And so you know, just stick with your team, guys, and. Uh, you know, it's going to feel real good when it happens. So, Brett, what's your prediction? Do you have a final final prediction? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, we actually did one of these the other night. And, um, I went 93 and 69. Um, nice. I had them winning the division. And I had them beating the Blue Jays in the World Series. Oscar, man, it's, it's, it's just destiny, right? We have to be dead mm-hmm. with the Yankees. And I think the Blue Jays have a better chance I than think, the Yankees. I, I, I'd rather the beat Sox the Blue Jays. Too. I think the I don't I think the Yankees get that I mean that that division is gonna be insane on that last day of the season, but I think the Yankees finish fourth. I have the Red Sox at first. I I, I no I have the yeah the Blue Jays at first, then the Rays, Red Sox, Yankees, and I think the Red Sox sneak through to the World Series, and I think they um uh, I think I said that they beat the Brewers in the World Series. I believe. Damn, that's a bold prediction. I, I, oh, think this, the, I think this Yankees is finally the year the Brewers. I think this is finally the year the Brewers sneak through. Um, that's what I said. Yeah, I can't on get the card. I can't. I can't have the Cardinals. I can never count the Cardinals out, man. It's Colin I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a bandwagon Cardinals fan. Um, <laughs> we'll keep it Phillies though. On the pod. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Look, just to go back on that, I, I've never been, and, and I'm speaking for myself. I've never been a fan of another team. Uh, it's always been, you know, Philadelphia, but I, I, I am a fan of other players, you know, like you got to respect mm-hmm. players like Mike Trout, Otani, and, you know, you like those hard nosed guys that play the game. Right. But as a kid, when I was growing up, Omar Vizquel was a, a very, you know, he was a very good player. Uh, I just love the shortstop position is to me, the shortstop position is the, the sexiest position in baseball. That's why I'm a Jimmy Rollins fan. But uh, yeah, it, it's okay to you know to have, you know, to be a fan of another another player. I mean, Brett can speak on that. I'm not gonna take his thunder, but he he has a, a favorite player from the uh, American League. Yeah, my my favorite player growing up was George Brett. Um, mm-hmm. Phil was my team, but George Brett was my favorite player. I you know I wore number five like him when I played baseball. I had his glove. Because back in the day, you got a glove. They all had some baseball player's name on it. Yep, I remember my, yep. dad had, my, my dad had a Greg Nettles one. I have a Dick Allen one somewhere around here. Well, but, that's uh, the other thing. My glove right now has Yadier Molina on it. And that's yeah, part of so the I mean, Cardinals. It's, it's, I've always been a Yadier Molina fan. Yeah, so you're a Yadier fan. Mm-hmm. This is last yep. year. It is. Yeah, so like, I always like George sad to see him go. As a result, the, the Royals are, have always been my AL team. You know, because – Back in the day, we, we used to get Channel 11 around here from New York, and they showed Yankees games. So, like, a couple times a year, I get to see the Royals and the, and the uh, Yankees play. I never actually saw them play in real life. Right. So, when the, when the Phillies are all the way out of it, I, I always has a little small spot in my heart for the Oakland A's, just because of the history here in Philadelphia. Well, and it, they're always – they're always a team like, you know, with the lowest budget. So I, I just saw uh, like a meme the other day where the Oakland A's budget for the whole year was like 34 million. And then Francisco Lindor's contract is 38. So it just kind of tells you, man, like they're the underdogs and not, and they always get like good, good guys over there, man. But they just seem to trade them off because it's not a big selling market over there. But because of the history in Philadelphia, after the Phillies are totally out of it, I always root for the A's to, you know, to do some damage. Did the A's ever yeah, end up so. spending money this offseason? They, did they no, still they don't trade everybody. Nope. Did they still say it's no, – yeah. yeah, they, they traded no, everybody no. over there. And they're, and they're, they're in their ballpark. Nothing's going to change until they get out of uh, the Coliseum. I think they're going to change in a couple of years. Or actually, yeah – or even move to Vegas or, you know, it's a shame. I hate to, I hate when teams, you know, get up and leave a city like, like the Rams did to St. Louis or, <laughs> you know, or San Diego did to uh, the Chargers. Uh, I hope that never happened. It, it, it would never happen here in Philadelphia. You don't have to worry about that. 
So you know what though? The the guy that moved the Colts, I think he almost bought the Eagles. I don't know. I have mm-hmm. to look it up. There was some connection. There was almost a there was almost a thing where the Eagles almost moved. But for the A's, man, that'd be their fourth move because they did a stop in Kansas City on the way out to Oakland. They played out there yeah. for like three years. Yep. They make their way around the, that team. Most irrelevant. So in our first in our first podcast, I don't remember how it came up, but I I said that the before Chapman, the athletics had their – we're talking who are we talking about? Chapman, Matt Chapman. Oh yeah. Like that was when the trade happened. Yeah, yeah, that was we were we had like this make your own player thing and Matt Chapman, like his power. And I said, you know what? The Ilkin Athletics are the most irrelevant team in baseball. That no one talks about them and they're always in it, but just no one talks about them. And then it was right right before that, like a couple days after, is when their fire sale happened, when they got rid of Olsen, they got rid of Chapman, they got rid of all yeah, the other guys. Yeah. So I feel like I cursed them, but um, they're no longer the most relevant team in baseball because they just got rid of all those guys. So. And then what's his name? So uh, he- Lazardo, he's suspended. Suspended? So he- they just got rid of their pitcher. Yeah, so they yeah, went to the right. Right. I had to look up their lineup the other day because I was like, who the hell are you easy we got these days? They have, you know, they have, they have like um, Elvis Andrews. Guy and Bolt. They have yeah. Piscotti. They got, uh, they got like, you know, guys. You know, they're not terrible. Yeah, Lazardo is suspended too. Hey, sir. They're um, yeah. opening day. Loriano. Their opening day started. That's from that, yeah, Loriano. Their opening I mean, day. We're going to see Cole Irvin. Oh, no. We're seeing Irvin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Irvin, Irvin. A cold order, yep. man. Yeah, he wasn't bad. Uh, yeah. I always an opening always day starter. For, uh, Montas is going to get traded. Yeah, so. Montas. All, all our farm guys, man. I always root for them, man. Like yeah, you I know, even Luke, Luke Williams going to uh, over there in San Fran. He just he just put up his first post in San Fran. Yeah, I just saw and, that. You know, like yeah, I'll miss you already, man. Because you know he he made an uh, impact, uh, a memory we would never forget. Yeah. Oh yeah. I will not forget that game. And he, he wasn't bad either. I mean he I mean he couldn't really hit the baseball, but other than that, I he was all right. Well he kind of slumped off a little bit and then uh Nick Mayton coming up and making an impact to uh the lone wolf. Um but again, yeah, like like we were just I think me and Brett were just talking about Darren Ruff, right? was that me and you, Brett? We were talking about Darren Ruff. Yeah, uh, he came up. To, he, yeah, he came up, and he's still he's still relevant over there in San Fran, man. You know, even when we go to DC, guys. Yeah, when we go to DC, we got Cesar Hernandez. These are the guys that I respect, man. Like Cesar Hernandez was a great second baseman for the Phillies. Uh, Franco's going to be over there now. You know what I mean? So those are guys. Freddie Galvis still love. was. The most yeah, he's in un- Japan now, right? Yeah, he was one of the most underrated players yeah. in baseball when he was here, like twenty six. Yeah, very good glove. Probably the best glove coming out of Redden, man. I mean, besides Mike Smith, but he had a very good glove. Um, the yeah. Phillies, someone just posted on a – I just saw a post that the Phillies have the highest um, opening opening day ticket sales out of any team. With um, Percentage hey, man, of all you... ticket sales out of 10%, they have 9.3%. This, Yo, this this city can be... I, couldn't, I couldn't even get tickets the other day. Yeah, they're sold out on phillies.com. I saw baseball the yeah, no, they're sold out. I couldn't get any. I was looking for two the other day. When the Phillies, yeah. I, what I've started to notice, especially last year when they went on an eight game winning streak, when the Phillies are good, Philadelphia shifts into red. I know we're always green with the Eagles, but when the Phillies start mm-hmm. to get good, it's a it's a completely different mood. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah. always. It's always going to be a football town here in Philadelphia, but when when the Phillies are good and they're rocking, man. It turns into a baseball town very quick, man. Although it did get annoying after a while, all those drunk like college girls and stuff. But now let me back as drunk moms. <laughs> yeah, and that is actually like, that I up always... Astro Alley, do take like forty five minutes to walk through. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally against that really like interesting too. Yeah, eagle chants in the Philly games, man. Oh, like, I hate listen. those. Oh. I think, listen, let, listen, unless you win Bre- the Super Bowl. You can't make Eagles chants at Eagles at yeah. Phillies games. And or listen, we're, we're we're five for five, man. But yeah, you know we're Eagles fans too. I mean, we love the Eagles, but again, you're, you're you, you, you got your you, you had the best player 
in Philadelphia. I'm saying this right now. He's the MVP. You have Bryce Harper, and he's sitting there in right field. He shouldn't have to, you know, he supports the Eagles too, but he shouldn't have to hear Eagle chants while, while they're losing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you want to rag on the team, go ahead and rag on it, but they shouldn't have to hear Eagle chants. You know, because they do notice, like we just found out recently in that video. They're like, we hear them. You know, like, so yeah. we're doing a chance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what the hell, man? I'm the MVP. I got no MVPs on that team. Yep. Although I will so, say, I going off Oscar's statement, I think the best athlete in Philadelphia. I, I mean, it's I think it's Joel Embiid. Not many seven foot people can do. Is that me? What is that sound coming from me? I I don't hear it. No, oh, okay. I, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. I know where it was from. Yeah, I did too. Uh, my, Hello, it's bad. It's bad. My bad. My bad. Um, not oh, many bad. seven. That not many seven foot people can do what Joel Embiid does on a daily basis. I mean, Bryce Harper's definitely number two. But I, I just had to, I just had to get out too yeah. And uh, so I just listened to the Barstool Sports uh, interview with Bryce Harper today, and man, that 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 interview got me hyped, man, because it was just Bryce Harper talking and telling telling us, the fans, and everyone in the Delaware Valley, that why he chose Philadelphia, how he loves it here. Um, he just wants to win. Um, he's doing he's doing everything to take care of his body so he can give us another great, you know, a, a great 10 years. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I was super pumped after listening to that interview. Bryce Harper it was a guy that always um, I didn't like when he was in D.C. Oh, no, I, uh, I, pro- I, I probably shouted because I, I used to. Ch- yeah, I, I, I shouted some things to him when he was in uh <laughs> And I can admit that I, I did because you know he was he was a Washington National and we you, when you yell at people is because they're good. Yeah, it, yeah. it is what oh, it 100%. is. All right. Yeah. So and even when he came to Philadelphia and the way he was uh, embracing the city and wearing the you know the fanatic cleats and wearing like the you know everything that we like, I still didn't trust him. <laughs> hard to say I didn't trust him man and then he he just won me over man and he is a good guy man he's a good player he's a great player he he's a great teammate uh he's good outside of Citizen Bank Park he's a family man he's a religious man like I I really love the guy now I remember hey, when- I, have a diff- I have a different take on Harper oh. so I used to always sit in, you know, in right field when he was in Washington. And, of course, it's like, man, screw Harper, man. But, like, just watching how he interacted with the fans, like, he would come over and point to a little kid in the Phillies jersey and actually he's going to throw a ball to him and then throw it to, like, some old guy in, like, a, in, like, a Nationals jersey. <laughs> now I'm a big pro wrestling <laughs> fan, so I'm like, yo, that is great heel work. Like, that is, like, outstanding heel work. And I was like, I would love for a guy like that on our team. And so, like, when, I, when that possibility came up, I was like, yo, we – have to get this guy. This guy is going to be yeah. so good here. Just the way he was, he would like troll the fans. And because he, we had Peter Bourgeois or whatever his name was, he wouldn't even acknowledge it. He wouldn't even, you know, like he didn't, it didn't look like he was having fun out there where Harper looked like he was, you know, playing baseball, having a good time. Remember me, when me Joey Brett. Votto a couple years ago faked out the oh, fans yeah. on the first base side? He was going to throw and they didn't. That's exactly what Harper was doing, but just on a lower scale. And me, me and Brett, we're. We're fans of uh, players that interact with the, uh, with the, you know, with the crowd, and we we had a, a few. Uh, Brett, we were with uh, who were we messing with out there? There was a brewer, uh, Lorenzo Kane. Lorenzo Kane. And Lorenzo when I tell Kane. you, we pulled up an interview on uh, our phone, and it was like a he had an interview that had all the questions of all his like favorite foods and everything. And we were shouting it out to him, and he was so impressed that we knew that stuff and like his nickname and that milk his God. favorite fruit was, yeah, we called him Milk Duck because of the ball head. And he just loved it, man. Like he was just showing us love the whole time. Like we love players like that. Ozuna's another guy that, you know, that interacted with us. So uh, another guy that I used to like from Washington, uh, Nigel Morgan. You guys, you, you kids probably don't even know who he was, but he was a hothead. So every time he came to Philadelphia, he used to flip. Flip us the bird and, and everything, man. I just love players that show emotion and interact with the fans. I think he made an all star game one year, Nigel Morgan. <laughs> I feel like that was like a year where he was like actually good. Yeah, I, I even have his bobblehead. 
I have something else for the Harper. When I when the Phillies swept the Mets at the beginning of August, and I was out with you guys with the brooms, I mm-hmm. my me and my dad were waiting for Harper, and we were like, yeah, it's, we gotta go home. It's getting late, so we we started going home. We see this blue Kia, but all the windows down, and it's like Bryce. And I saw some of the piece with the beard. I was like, is that Bryce Harper? The last thing I was expecting to see was Bryce Harper in a blue Kia with all the windows down. Hey, yeah, we, we see, so yeah. he gets stuck in traffic. He leaves, he gets stuck at the lights. Hilarious. Yeah. And yeah. nobody realizes it. Nobody even like he's just sitting there in traffic and nobody's not the yeah, Because he's driving, a, he's driving a Kia. No one's expecting the National League MVP to be driving a Kia. That's a Bronco. So, that thing's a Bronco, I think. Yeah. I, I, I think I he saw a this- Kia. I want to let this know now, man. Like when the players, like we do show love to the players out there when they, you know, at the games. But we we're not the we're not those guys that sit right at the gate for autographs. We we keep our our party across the street, and when the players come out, we just clap them up, salute them, tip our you know caps, and we show love that way. So I just yeah. want to make that clear that no one's like, oh, you guys are hawking them down for autographs, like. Me, me and Brett, we're older guys already. We're still young kids because we love baseball, but, yeah, we're not the autograph types. There's a time and a place for that. There is, yeah. yeah. Then we go over their families. You know, they've just been working all day. You know what was real cool, Brett, that I heard off that interview? He said he do- it doesn't matter how late the game ends, that he goes home and he has dinner with his wife, no matter what. Yeah. Win or, win or loss. Ass. Yeah, so that, that that was cool to hear. And uh, and another cool thing I got out of that was Jason Worth telling Bryce Harper when there were nationals that you're, you're going to end up in Philadelphia. He was like, yes, no way, yeah, you're kidding. Yeah, I saw that. I, I that was cool that. too, man. Yeah. I, um, I saw that um that Barstool tweeted that Harper's loudest submission I forgot was his first home run. And I retweeted it, and I said, it gets louder in October, Bryce. And I, I, I think I almost have 100 likes on it now, so that's kind of cool. Uh, let's move uh, he, on. He liked it, right? That was a different one that Bryce Harper liked on my Instagram. This was on okay. Twitter. But, yeah, Bryce Harper has cool. been liking my stuff as of recent, so that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I remember that. He posted that, was, uh, he posted that thing, winner of the MVP. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. <laughs> picked the wrong night to go to the Flyers game. But um, they lost that night, of course, in the shootout. They didn't score a goal. Um. Let's move yeah. on because we're already running out of time again. We got seven minutes. Yeah. So let's move so, on. Yeah, I gotta get to soon anyway. The Twitter pools. Would yeah. Like to- so we actually ran. So we have our Bell Ringers um, podcast Twitter um, page. So if you haven't checked that out, for those of you guys who are watching at home right now, make sure to check out Bell Ringers PSR on Twitter. So we ran some polls asking, I'd say the questions that everyone is wondering going into the 2022 season, some about the prospects, um, and some about who's going to start where. So I want to get your guys' reactions on this. So right now we have who gets to start at third base. So I'm going to look up right now. We're going to come back to that. I got it up. Yeah, all right. Uh, Thank you, Ben. I can can answer that question real quick. Uh, I think Girardi makes that decision depending on who's the opponent, uh, uh, who the opposition is, who's pitching. Um, Because you have uh, Alec Bohm on third and he bats right and you had uh stop uh bat and left. I think he just makes that decision off of the the, the pitching that day. And you yeah. also got Camargo um, in there sometimes too. Yeah. Well I'm yeah, sorry I think I think he's, he's a, a hitter. hitter. He's gonna go with the hot hitter. hand. He's gonna go with the hot hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um the poll I think he's gonna go poll, with whoever's rolling the poll for whoever gets to start at first. It's Bowman Stott as the options. It is 50-50. Wow. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes, I guess it, it makes sense. I the scales. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm going, I'm going, uh, uh, boom, sign my, uh, my cutout right there. So, um. The Phillies never called right. me about my cutout, so I got to figure that out sometime soon. Hey, <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, I did. I don't remember if, I don't know if any if people saw it, but when you went in the third base gate, and you look to your right, the last, the last cutout all the way on the left at the bottom was my cutout. Very old picture, very bad picture too. Um, I never picked it up from when we had to 
when the pickup session was. So I was like, oh, they're going to throw it out. I remember walking in in the second game of the season. I'm like, oh, look at that. It's my cutout. And I was like freaking out and stuff. But I was told when I called the Phillies before the lockout that they're going to call me about the thing. If they're going to take it down, they'll give it back. And if they're Maybe not going to take left. it down, they'll so Maybe it's they, it's, they haven't called me back, so I'm guessing it's still up. And if it's not, we're going to have some problems. But we got four minutes What's... left. We have four minutes left, so I'm going to play. It's still up when we went there at Christmas. I don't remember. We were over that way, too. Say that one more time, Brett. When we went there at Christmas, was it still up there? Remember we were over there? Remember that? I, didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see it up. Oh, boy. They had to pick up, <clears throat> they had to pick up for the batters the other day, I saw. Hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm, that actually, I the cardboard cutout thing is pretty cool. And I just think I I think that if I was a player there, it would have really given me a better feel of the stadium, even though they're not real people. And they had sound effects, which I don't really think did much. But I just think having having hate for lack of a better term stuff in the stands probably helped the players make feel like it was a more. They, had, they cool. had the most out of any other team. In oh the yeah, leagues by a lot. Some, will, still, some teams. Yeah. Or having a fan mm. group in center field supporting you the whole season. Yep. That is That's true, too. Better. So, why? It, 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 it it it's saying me. I have three minutes left, so I'm going to restart the Zoom again. So, if. Uh... No, nah, I got cut out, man. I got to go to work tomorrow. You got to go? All right. Yeah. I got to go play right. some MLB to show tonight. Oh, boy. <laughs> First time playing it. So, I'll be up all night playing that. <laughs> all right. I'll all right. Well, I'll send in you that case. For the, um, are we wrapping it up or are we going to? Yeah, we'll wrap okay. it up. We'll let these guys go. But um, to finish up, we have Gregorius and Stott. Uh, Gregorius and Bohm at 43%. Those are the two guys that are going to start at short and third. Gregorius and Stott at 29%. And Stott and Bohm at 29%. So after, we already covered that for the most part. And then center field, Moniak and Verling. I think oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's hard. Yeah, I think it's uh, whoever the hot hand is, man. I think mm-hmm. the only the only the only um way that Didi's gonna lose his job, um, if it's his defense doesn't step up. Like if his range, yeah. if he's not hitting his range, or he keeps on like double clutching to throw the first, or just uh, I think it's he's a professional man. Just just touch up on the mechanics, and I hope I hope he he keeps his position. I think I think that's a, be all right. Going yeah, back to DD, center, your... going back to center field, I feel like Joe Girardi right now has to go with who's hotter right now. And that's Mickey Moniak. The dude hit, what, six home runs in spring training? He was oh, he yeah. was fantastic. And that's uh, a very yeah. Joe Girardi thing, too. Yeah. I mean, he did that last year with Ronald Torres. Ronald Torres <laughs> is not even, not even close to being the top third baseman, the best third baseman. But at that point, he was who was hitting, and he put him in the lineup every day, and it paid off, especially in that yeah. Mets series. I think, I think they have Mickey start at center. I mean, you could really place Veerling and Moniak whenever. I don't really – doesn't really matter to me because there's 162 games. It doesn't matter until we start. I don't care unless we're winning games. Um, so, I think Moniak yeah. gets, gets the nod on, on the opener. All right. Well, all I right, think guys. that is all we have today. So, um, Brett, Oscar, thank you so much for joining us. Also, awesome. Brett and Oscar, um, where, can people, where can people find you two on social media? Yes. Pandemic crew. Pandemic crew, Twitter, everything. Instagram, Twitter. Yep. All that is down here right now. Um, throughout the all video. that's in the I, I, I'll put all the links in the description as well. All right. Well, I don't want to run out of time here and I'll let you guys go. So, um, thank you guys, thank you guys again. again for joining. Yes. All right. Let's go, Phillies. Let's go, Phillies. Let's go, Phillies. Yeah.